Um, so, my name is Jens, uh, living in northern Sweden, or used to live in northern Sweden, um, northern Europe, southern Sweden. Uh, I've been working at Strange Loop Games since 2020, and started off as QA, and moved up to game design and game balance now. So that is main resident in spreadsheets and all things economy-wise when it comes to crafting and utilitarian in-game. So yeah, that, that, that was Jens. Uh, we're going to have the chance to talk with him in a moment. So prepare all the questions that you have, uh, questions and comments that you have about balance. But first, let's start with a small recap. We are going to have streams every week to display features, to talk about gameplay and balance. And the most important is to talk to the community, listen to the questions and opinions about the features. So feel free to comment or ask questions in the chat and we will try to answer all of them. So I would like to start with a um, feature. Please give me a second, I need to switch the screen. I'll do this. Um, so I would like to start with a feature that has existed for a while, but has been updated multiple times by multiple devs, including me. And uh, we are aware that it can be improved a lot. I'm talking about the economy viewer. So what is the economy viewer? It is um, uh, some sort of spreadsheet where you can see information. Uh, please give me a second. So uh, I just uh, enabled a small QR code here on the corner of the screen. It's, it, it will take you to uh, Google Forms where you can send us information about what do you think about this feature and what did you change about it. We would like to read the comments and try to improve the feature based on, on that information that we receive. So what is the economy viewer? It's uh, some sort of spreadsheet you can open using the shortcut Y. And once you open it, you will see information about the products that are being sold and the different stalls, stores, compare prices, etc. So one of the basic usages that you can have is that imagine that you want to craft something, but you don't have all the ingredients. So you can check who sells the ingredient. Let's say that I need a log, so I can check who is selling logs, and I can check what what, the, what is the distance to that store. I can compare prices, click the distance to see on the map where that store is, and well, that that's like kind of the basic usage. But we can have some more complex usages. For example, let's imagine that I have. Uh, this fish that I'm, I want to solve, but is about to go bad. Let me change that with a command. Let's say that the freshness is just 50%. And yeah, I don't want this, this food to, to go bad. So I want to sell it first and I can just go to the store and say that I want to sell this fish. Sorry, oh, fish. And uh, here I can see that it's out of stock. That's because the default freshness requires is, is 50. I, I would say that at least five should be enough. And now it's on the store. So the idea is that when people buy stuff, they can sort by price, but they can also sort by durability. So I can check what is just about to go bad. I know that the fish may go bad really soon. So probably the price will be lower. I mean, as a seller, you can decide to use as a uh, reduced price for the food that is about to go bad. That will help to reduce the overall waste on the server, but will also reduce your, like the amount of money you'd lose if the, the food just go bad. That's just like some uh, example of usages of the of this feature. We also have for parties, contract, compensations, and rents. So the idea is, is that as, as we know that this can be improved a lot, we would like to hear your opinion about it. So let us know why do you use the economy viewer, if you use it at all, and when you use it, do you find everything you need there? Is there something that you'd like to remove? Like, yeah, I, I have never used really this. I don't see why it should be displayed. Or on the contrary, I'd like to see this and it's not available. So feel free to use the chat or send the information using the, the QR code, whatever uh, works for you, it's fine for us. And that would be all about this small feature I wanted to display. As, I, as you may know, today's stream is focused on balance, so it was just a small display to, to gather information. 
So now um, we, we, we will be checking the, the chat, but now let's hear James. James, what do you have to, to tell us? Uh, well, as of as might be uh, hinted by the stream name, um, we're going to discuss a little bit about balance and overall implementation and ingredients related to the boats, which everyone is super hyped for. Oh yeah. Um, do you want us to flip over a screen? Do you? you? You should be able to see your your screen now. I mean, my screen is it should right. be below. Uh, still, still showing your Unity. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, right, so let's start off strong with both a broken object and a fully working object. Uh, we have the uh, one of our biggest assets in the game right now. Um, you've seen the oil refinery before, that's pretty high up. Um, we're now introducing a giant construction yard for the bigger naval vessels, which is currently named Iron Shipyard, but uh, let, let's ignore everything that's in the background. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is our substantially bigger object. Um, we're working on some some new building requirements to be able to place this as well. So this will be needing to be placed in water or partially in water, uh, which means you're not going to be able to you know, construct these huge boats up in the mountains across from, from everywhere um, but the bigger boats are going to need actual water connections and then we unfortunately the small shipyard broke uh, which is this amazing grey box it's beautiful um, Milenko spent a lot of time making it <laughs> making it this shiny uh, which brings us to the first sort of initial view of the new intermediary ingredients um, that are involved in crafting these. And oh yeah, and then might be prudent to also mention that Milenko is our amazing lead artist. Uh, has worked quite significantly on the avatar that's going to come up in a later stream. Um, so these are some of the new objects. These are some of the new boats that are coming. We have a couple of small ones that's going to be introduced um, early on in gameplay. Um, which is going to be sort of your equivalent to naval carts. They're going to have a small inventory space. They're going to be fairly, fairly cheap to produce in the same sort of range. Um, you've got the small canoe, you've got the large canoe. And these are made by just wooden materials. Um, which is comprised of tall planks and wooden oars, as well as small wooden ship frames. And one of our sort of big balance impact um, requirements when it came to boats in general and, and overall is um, how, are, how are these going to be interacting, why are we needing them, and what role would they play in economy um, where early game I think a lot of people are um, sort of cutting close to the whole issue of you need to transport something in over rivers or you need to transport things across deserts and into uh, into other regional areas that might have resources that you that you want or you know you you really want to have those bricks but they're on another island so you're going to have to either build a giant bridge or you're going to need to track them one at a time across. Um, so uh, one of the big things was that we need these to be available early, but also have a clear path of upgrading from having your small boat 
to a medium sized boat as well as to be able to move over to bigger shipping when you come into late game where there's a large volume of materials that need to travel over larger distances but you don't want to compete and build giant asphalt roads across all the land and big tunnels. And yeah, so we have wooden hull planks, which is going to be your basic general material for all the wooden basis crafts. You have wooden keels, as you can see, it's been made by logging. Um, what I have learned, which isn't shown here, is that we have a new profession to go along with these, which is the shipwright. And that is why we, you can't really see it here, but um, we are missing an icon for it. And that's why it's just showing off as the default sort of missing icon icon. And that is going to be your new intermediary competitive uh, vehicle profession with basic engineering and mechanics. And we can go into, I just fix that quickly there we go and you can go in here and you can have a clearer view of the new intermediary parts we have the hull planks and they're made in the wooden shipyard they're basis of um, hewn logs which is pretty straightforward you've got your uh, more advanced vessels which use iron hull sheets which are made at the bigger shipyard and they're comprised of plates and screws and this will be your starting point for involving mechanics in crafting these boats. And then you've got the, the um, early tier rudder. You've got the metallic version counterpart for the modern ones. And that will be your factor of if it's going to be a small early boat or if it's going to be a middle tier. As oars are used for controlling the boats um, tech-wise for the canoes. And then the rudder will be moving over into carpentry, so sort of stepping up your tier one, two, three vessels. Um, you've got a couple of different ship frames to account for this, so there, there'll be a bit of intermediary construction in between them. Uh, we move over to the big one. You have the more advanced vessels as well. So you have your wooden transport ship, which is going to be your mid-tier range transport and that'll be sort of your bread and butter uh middle tier which is kind of technologically equivalent to the steam truck just for water with a little bit more carry capacity obviously because boats are built for bulk cargo you have the medium fishing trawler that is gonna be your craft or your um harvesting vessel which is going to be driving around and collecting fish as it passes over and we'll go into more in detail sort of showing you off these vessels in a later bo dedicated boat stream um, just sort of touching on the balance part of it and the crafting and where you go from point A to now I'm in the water and sailing around and these also have a couple of new ingredients, which is mooring ropes. And that's going to be your way to anchor the boats to not be pushed around. As probably a lot of people have voiced concerns about, what if your boat is idle in the water because of trucks having friction, they're standing still even if you're colliding with them. Um, they're not really going anywhere, although you can push them around a little bit, but you know they're, they're, they're a hurdle to move around if someone parked it inconveniently in front of you. Um, boats, on the other hand, is on water, so they're pushable. And so one of our solutions to this is being able to anchor up your vessel to a port or an entity in the water. Um, so that's sort of where your mooring ropes are going to come into play. Um, these are going into the craft of the object, so that'll be uh, it'll be a bit more clarified on, on a later one. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry that I interrupt you. There are a couple of questions. Would you mind to, to if yeah. I read them to you? So nice. I, I, we have been collecting some of the questions that we have seen on the, on the chats. Uh, the first one is, will the behavior of dynamic water and placing things in water change for the 
10 version, if we are placing things in water, it'd be nice to have water that would behave a bit better. Uh, yeah, water behavior is something that we're continuously sort of looking at improving and we're working on some new some new block occupancy and placement systems to deal with when you're placing things in water, when you're removing things out of water. Um, and yeah, it, it's a tricky system and it is something that we're constantly trying to upgrade and improve on. Um, it is It is a bit unruly as of the current state. Nice. Uh, there is also a lot of people talking about the possibility of getting chop boats. Like we have the chop cart. Uh, will will we get also chop boats? Um, not initially. Um, it is something that we've speculated about, and um, it is quite moddable in a sense that uh, due to our systems with components and everything being modular, attachable, attachable core like script system wise. Um, it would be pretty straightforward to, if you would want to take one of these boats and attach a store type component to it, and you know that convert that boat into a store boat essentially. Um, but as of as of point ten o right now, um, we won't feature any any actual dedicated shopping boats per se. Nice. Uh, there is also with uh, some questions about the visuals, for example. And uh, would the boards look different if you use different wood style? Uh, no, there, there's no aesthetic difference in, in the wooden material that you're using. Okay, I see. I, I think that it would be cool to have a mod for something like that, but, but that comes really after uh, the, the feature has been implemented, tested, and really takes uh, quite some time to to get the mods working, but but yeah, that, I think that would be a, a nice feature to, to include eventually. So we have uh, another question. Ah, oh, uh, first a comment. Someone say that making fishing more useful would be awesome. So the question would be more like, would be fishing be balanced for the boats release? Uh, yeah, there, there's likely going to be a, a rebalance of some of the fish types and the, um, the tier types of fish, and you're also going to look at a big fundamental change in in sort of fish um, quantity um, harvesting because we have a bunch of recipes that are hinged on explicit types of fish like um, the shark, uh, the Pacific sardine that everyone just absolutely loves, um, and uh, these are going to be sort of impacted differently due to the fact that you're not just reliant on fish traps to get them but you are going to be able to actively harvest them in the same way that you are with hunting and so there's, there's going to be a big um, bulk harvest quantity increase and that is, that'll be something that we are taking account for in terms of um, food balance in general as fish will be more uh, fish will overall be more available so I, I understand it, that it makes a lot of sense. I have a, a, a there's a question I haven't seen in the chat that I, I, I actually have. So let's imagine that I'm going on, on my boat and I get to a point really far, really far from the coast and I don't have calories and I don't have a way to go back to the city. What What is the situation that I mean? What, what should I do in that case if I don't have calories to return to back to the land? Um. As of right now, you're, there's nothing really, um, there's nothing really changing in terms of not being able to move around. Um, but overall, swimming and, and improvements to that, as well as possible equipment for it, is something that we're looking into. Okay, that's nice. Uh, we have a couple of more questions. Uh, let me check one moment. Um, Okay, but it's a question also if it would be possible to to take cars on a, on a boat and also if you have to break the car to take on a boat to make it a little more realistic. Um, yeah, no, the, um, we, we, the barges that we have, um, as you can see in the crafting list here, you got the um, you got the industrial barge here, but 
I think the wooden barge has gone a bit astray. No, it's yeah, it's in here. It shouldn't be in here, but it's in here. Um, so the wooden barge as well as the industrial barge are big platform vehicles, sim as you would um, anticipate them anticipate them to be and they can carry vehicles directly they don't have a dedicated storage and storage as of right now um so you can you can take two trucks and drive onto one of them if you want to do and, and ship the ship the vehicles themselves filled with materials that's nice i think it's a nice feature to be able to to, to carry vehicles on the on the road so we have um another question uh does the additional boats will really slow down human swimmers um there is a potential for that yes yes as you can imagine uh balancing boats it's it's really complicated james and, and john have talked a lot uh, about that a lot because we need to find like the right motivation for people to use boats and it may imply balancing different stuff i mean of course food related like we mentioned before but yeah swimmers it's one of the things that may require balance once the boats are introduced uh, another question we have here is what happened to the ferry from early, earlier trailers? Uh, it, it's still there. That would be the wooden barge. Okay, nice. So just change the, the name. Nice. Uh, another question. It will, be, will there be boats that can harvest kelp? Um, not at the moment, no. That it, it's, all the kelp is still manually harvested and that is something that we are I, I am looking into potential um, farming uh, applications for it but um, nothing that that we have on the table to change for 10.0 um, okay that's nice I sorry let me check the other question uh, will the world generation be changed to add more water between islands now that we have boats uh, Potentially some minor tweaks is gonna be on the table, yeah. Um, but uh, as as a world gen in general, we do try to accommodate um, a large variety of different presets, as well as trying to accommodate to be sort of a uh, a, a moderate middle ground, and then allow server administrators to sort of tweak and increase the water quantity if they want to have more of an island scenario or reduce it if they want to have sort of a more coastal world where um, you have more land mass and you have more land land gameplay versus uh, naval interactions so that's something that's up to most of the admins to decide on their own okay you see that's nice uh there is another question for the for the machines for example if i have a excavator on the top of a barge would i be able to do yeah it, all, all the vehicle functionalities will still be open you're, you're driving the vehicle on top of it and you can interact with the vehicle from it um it'll be a bit tricky because it's going to be locked in with the railing but um you you can still do weird right. things or uh, dump tailings into the ocean if you wanted to or, or whatever you felt like uh, that's the nice so, so yes you can continue telling us about the balance and i'll let you know when you have additional questions yeah so um on that moving goods from from left and right and up and down um this is going to be sort of an integral part of some of the new system changes with with settlements and everything else that comes into play, um, it'll revolve a lot of regionalizations. And I think a lot of people are going to opt for getting into a canoe or, or a middle tier vessel um, quite quickly as a means of not have to deal with any infrastructure on land. Because, you know, once you're in a boat, you have an entire ocean that is a road for you. Uh, so you have no you ha you have no uh, no other players in the way. If you're the first one on the water with a boat, once once there's more players, you're gonna have a um, an interesting highway of people trying to shuttle goods back and forth, and some of the interactions to make sure that um, you'll be able to lock your boats down is two of the new other world objects, which is the mooring posts, a wooden one and a steel one. That will come into mid early 
early gameplay as well as late gameplay and it'll allow you to uh, sort of hook up your boat and uh, uh, nail it down. That is probably most of it. We have some some of the parts of it being sort of heavily economical wise is the integral part of it. We try to span a lot of the professions dealing with crafting these. Um, so you have iron works, um, you've got the anchors being made by the smelter. Um, you have some of the mechanical parts being made by the mechanic. You've got the, the ropes being made by the tailor. Um, and these are going to have to sort of get along sell each other intermediary parts and be able to help players get their goods to where they need them to be and hopefully we'll see a lot more uh, riverside towns and uh, shore provinces sort of crop up due to this uh, and to sort of go into a little bit of how this looks behind the scene um, as you know you've, you've all seen these these pretty assets and it's easy to calculate on what you're crafting how you're crafting and and what resources you need to do and to sort of give an in indication of how it looks for um, when you're actually setting these things up uh, yeah for, uh, is... i'm sorry jens uh jens a couple of minutes ago mentioned that that we need to balance some stuff like for example the fishing so this is like the template that that is used for that i'm sorry for the interruption gents <laughs> go go ahead yeah um no so this is how it looks at the back end when we're dealing with uh implementing new items um adding new costs changing out resource materials adding descriptions to items changing out where they're being crafted and you know and since dennis promised spreadsheets i had to give them have to give uh, some display of it and it is quite rudimentary in terms of you know it is straightforward it is an excel sheet um, so we take this sheet we convert it into something that the server reads and picks into its place and um, creates the scripts that the server runs on and that pops into game as as items um, there's a couple of more things in, in unity and, and under the hood there that works in regards to setting these up um, technically but um, on my end it's essentially plugging these things in making sure that i communicate with art and having these assets created um, and sort of play with the team and make sure that everything is working correctly. And then I do a lot of calculations offhand with, with multiple other spreadsheets, but I'm not going to show you those this time. Yeah, it's that that is really cool. I have used that, that Excel before. I work on the on the spoilage of the food. I mean, I, I don't know how, for how long have you played. Uh, I mean, the people watching this room, but uh, for an app, point uh, we established that food can go bad i mean it, it was a feature that didn't exist before so we need to to add some elements to the excel template to add the ability for the for the food and also to create different uh, items or modify existing items that could help the food to be preserved for for a lot for longer so it's really cool because you can literally move the values on the Excel and once you go to the game, the, the game has been updated. I mean, of course, we need to do some, some setup initially, but once the setup is done, you just need to move the, the values and it is updated. It's, it's really cool the way that, that it's balanced. So yeah, sorry for the interruption again, Jens. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very true. Um, you know, when the technical stuff aside, um, once you have an item created and it's implemented and everything set up, um, actually coming into you know calculating how much it's gonna cost, how much it's gonna impact the environment um, in terms of something being added to the blast furnace, for instance, how long is it gonna take to craft? Um, that'll result in X amount of pollution being generated. Um, so being able to add these 
both recipes in a sense and being able to read out how much of an environmental impact they're going to have when they're being crafted compared to say an excavator um, and sort of evaluate what the cost should be um, is a very intricate and fine tuning um, endeavor I should say um, it's a lot of fun if you like spreadsheets and calculations um, but if you're if you're looking at it from an art standpoint, might not be as fun. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a really complicated uh, task. I mean, a lot of games that I have played have had issues with balance when the features have been added. I I think that is a a really nice uh, task. Maybe not for me, but but yeah, it's it's really nice. And uh, yes, we have a couple of additional questions. So let let me uh, tell you. We have uh, another question here. Historically, barge could carry a huge amount of material, especially heavy material. What's the balance with industrial barge compared with modern truck? Uh, is there a modern barge expect in the future with more capacity? Um, the barges per se are not hinged on an inventory. Um, they're more of a flat surface allowing you to transport vehicles themselves. So you could essentially take, I think the industrial barge size-wise can fit four modern trucks. Um, but we have speculated on being able to use it as a storage per se, but we're, we're also kind of wanting to keep some of that special purpose um, methods to their own vehicles to give more of a, the barges being more of a direct vehicle transport. So kind of ferrying over ferrying over your truck or your excavator to where it's needing to go without having to pick them up all the time and um, you're gonna be looking at the transport ship um, initially the wooden one uh, for your actual goods transport which are gonna allow a lot more than your just your truck itself um, okay, uh, but uh, I'm sorry that, but it, it actually triggers another question that that we have in the chat already. So you mentioned that the that the barges don't carry materials itself is more like a platform. So are we going to have like some sort of cargo chip that that can carry materials? Yeah, you've got for 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 point ten o that the Townsend Nation release with these. Um, you're looking at the medium sized wooden transport chip. And we're more than likely looking at a, a more modern, advanced, bigger one later on. Um, but it is sort of open air to additions, um, both in terms of potential upgraded fishing boats, but also transports themselves. That, that's nice. Uh, a, a couple of minutes ago, we talked about the fishing balance. Uh, now that that fishing is going to be more common, are we also going to add more recipes? I mean, is that something that, that you already have in mind? Um, they're being looked at. Yeah, um, <laughs> I will. I will have to convince Toby to uh, um, to spend more more of his time to create more foods. Um, since we added the 3D foods, they're also a little bit more complex to add more of, um, but they're also a lot more fun to have in game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mentioned that, that our players have already noticed we have pretty food. That's really nice. I, I love how it looks. I have seen a couple of pictures from from players, I mean, screenshots from players, and, and I love how the food looks. But it comes with, with some issues. For example, now that we want to introduce new recipes, it would imply a more additional task for the for the art team. Yeah, that's that's right. I, I, I haven't considered that before the question, but yeah, that that's that makes a lot of sense. So we have um, another question. Uh, let me give you a second. Since we are talking about balance now, what are your thoughts on model upgrades? They get a bit problematic with long product chains as each step will add the plugin reduction again. You can also um, read it on Discord just in case. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Um, upgrade modules is something that we're continuously monitoring. Um, that is something that I want to want to sort of rework in how they how they're applied to tables in general, but it's 
it's a little bit too early to go in on that, so I'll leave that hanging um, and answer that potentially in a later stream. Okay, does night start? So, so I mean, we we will check in if, if we can talk about that in in, a, in another stream. Let's keep with the questions. Will there be current or wine introduced so boat can travel away? Then win a hook. Um, weather systems in general is is another thing that we're we've looked at and. It's tricky because there's a lot of factors involved in making it play nice with different systems. Right now we have a simulated wind system um, as well as solar, um, which is kind of height dependent. And um, yeah, it, it's visually only applying on uh, artificially on trees and brushes to, to get the world to look more alive, but it's nothing that actually physically impacts it um, it comes with its own its own positives and negatives um, it, it is something that's on the board and something we're interested in implementing but it's also something out of concern for performance but also kind of figuring out how the system would fit in and, and what the positives would be and you know what effects we want out of it um, because it would be something that could look really cool to push push water around and have a breeze or you know if you add sailing boats and they would move them faster or um, catch them dead still in the water if you don't have wind um, but yeah it, it's a system that we're playing around with but it's nothing nothing nailed down to any specific version and or um, when it's happening, but it, it is being looked at out of design point. Okay, nice. Uh, another question, but but yeah, no, I, I, I agree with James here. The uh, weather system, I mean, even only including wind, it's really complicated. I and mean, the math behind that would be really expensive for the for the CPU, for example. I mean, all the, all the iteration that it need to be done to achieve a realistic system, it's quite complicated so that way before we include a feature we still need to to decide if it is worth for the for the gameplay considering all uh, another question that we have here how do we overcome a difference in rivers with boats first uh, give, me, give me a second yeah, I, I sent you on the on Discord channel just in case. But oh yeah, um, the the height differences between yeah. rivers. Um, generally, boats don't go upstream. I, I think is the uh, <laughs> is the summary of that. Um, it is one of our most tricky parts of physics and maneuverability with the boats that we're looking into. Um, so it's it's still undecided how we want to kind of deal with it. It's we're, we're we're testing out the system internally, um, so I don't really have a good answer for that. Um, all I can say it looks really funny right now. <laughs> I think is the uh, the answer for that one. Yeah, no, that's that's a really complicated uh, problem. I mean, even in the real world, I mean, we have, for example, if we if we see how the how Panama solves that issue, it's really complicated because they had like to to create multiple platforms to adjust the height of the water. No, it's it's really complicated in real life. Now in the game, it's it's something that yeah, we need to. To evaluate, but but yeah, it, uh, as James mentioned, it's already something that that they are working on. So let's talk about the next question. Uh, will the boats rust? I mean, do the boats will need some sort of maintenance? Um, not well, partially, I should say. Um, the similar to how carts and the trucks are not really having a maintenance or a modular system to them, where things break or things get damaged um, the workable vehicle has so we we have a modular system for the um, the fishing boat similar in terms of the way we have it applied to uh, we finally have it applied to the um, uh, the steam tractor where your 
uh, your plow and your harvester and seeder breaks on durability as of you're using it. Um, the fishing boats will also have durable parts for the um, the fishing nets, the mesh nets that they're trawling with. Um, so those will be needing to be repaired, uh, which I currently have assigned to tailoring, I think, or if it's hunting I left it at. Um, sort of give it a touch of the whole fishing rod and the, the fishing expansion um, in general. So yeah, we'll have we'll, we'll have a repairable part for the fishing boat, so you're not going to be able to just fish infinitely for free. Yeah, that's that's all the questions that that we had so far. So so yeah, you can continue if you want to tell us more about the boat or balance itself. Uh, I think I'm kind of kind of running out of things to sort of go ahead without touching too far into into some of the mechanics and the intricacies that we we want to showcase um, later on, and um, they. The boats have some new, some new general features that um, I think everyone's going to be happy with. Um, as far as you can see, Dennis, on the um, on the upgrade modules, um, I think I covered some of it. But yeah, they they um, they do get problematic, and it's something that I want to change out. And if we want to go on on a bit more detailed design choice for them is um i i want to semi scrap them if you will um so instead of instead of you being able to interchange or uh, intermittently change them out between module one two three four um you would sort of permanently upgrade your workbench towards a specific upgrade so you would grab parts from someone crafting them apply the upgrade to the table it'll permanently improve the table and its capacity but it'll also in increase the requirements of that table in terms of either room room quality material tier um, and potential energy applicants and um, adding different properties well that's that's really nice i think that's all the all the questions that we have about both some balance there was another question for the economy viewer uh the question was if the if we are going to throw items that are at, out of stock i think that's a nice feature to consider because well i mean it can help to realize what the server and the people need i think that is a nice feature we also i take the the document the google forms and we have uh we had a lot of answers so i'm really happy with that i'm going to only read them but not in the school because it has a, a lot of information there but, but yeah, that, that would be all for today. Thank you everyone for coming to the stream. We are going to have another stream the next week. And well, Dennis will be giving you more information about the, the next stream. So that would be all for today. Thank you everyone. And see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye.